My only wish is to have my consciousness purified by the words emanating from his lotus mouth. Attachment to his lotus feet is a perfection that fulfills all desires. He opens my darkened eyes and fills my heart with transcendental knowledge. He is my Lord, birth after birth. From him, extend to him my enemies. By him, ignorance is destroyed. The Vedic scriptures sing of his character. Our spiritual master is an ocean of mercy. The friendly poor and the Lord of the Master of the O oh, Master, be us and spread to us. Give us the shade of the lotus feet. May your fame spread all over the three worlds. We take shelter of the lotus feet. Divine loving grace, in the peace of God, the Son of God, the Son of God. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Kora More Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Daya Kora More Toma Pina Ketayalo Jakat Samsare Jakat Samsare Patita Pavana Hetu Tavo Avatara Mosamopati Ta Prabhu 
ना पाई पे आ हाहा प्रभु नित्यानंद प्रेमानंद सुखी नित्यानंद प्रेमानंद कृपा पलो कानाकोरो आमी पोद तुकी तय करो सीता पति अद्वैत को तब कृपा पाले पाए चैतन्य हा स्वरूप सनातन रूप रघु पट जुक श्री जीवा प्रभु लोकना ताय करो श्री आचार्य प्रभु श्रीनिवास रामचंद्र संग मगे नारोता मता हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम राम हरे हरे
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय गोरानीताय यो गोरानीताय गोरानीताय जय गोरानीताय जय प्रभु पदाजय प्रभु पदा प्रभु पदा श्रील प्रभु पदा Krishnadia devotees, good morning. Thank you very much for coming. And uh, please give me some blessings. I can speak today from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. We are today going to read from Matya Lila, chapter 22, the process of devotional service. And uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking to Sanatan Goswami. We are going to read the text number 19. Nice karmyam api achuta pava varchitam. Nice karmyam api achuta pava varchitam. Na shopate gyanam alam niranjanam. Na shopate gyanam alam niranjanam. Kuta punaha sasvat abatram ishvare. Na charpitam karmayat api akaranam. Nineteen. Someone wants to repeat? Nice karmyam api achuta bhava varjitam. Nice karmyam alam niranjanam. Kutapuna shashvat abadram ishvare. Na charpitam karma yat abhi akaranam. Nice karmiam apya chutta bhava varchitam. Nasho pate gyanam alam niranjana. Kutapuna shashvada batram ishvare. Kutapuna shashvada abatram ishvare. Nacharpita karma yat api akarana. Nice karmyam api achuta pava varjita. Nasho pate gyanam alam niranjanam. Kudapuna shashvat abatram ishvare. Nasho pate gyanam alam niranjanam. Kudapuna shashvat abatram ishvare. 
Nacharpitam karma yat api aranam. Nice karmyam, which does not produce enjoyment of the resultant action. Which does not produce enjoyment of the resultant action. Api, api. although, although. Achuta bhava of devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Varchitam devoid. Na not. Shobate looks beautiful. Gyanam speculative knowledge. Alam exceedingly. Niranjanam which is without material contamination. Kutaha how much less? Punaha again? Sashvat always at the time of practicing and at the time of achieving the goal. Abhatram inauspicious. Ishvare to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Na not. Cha also. Arpitam dedicated. Karma activities. Yat which api although akaranam causeless. Translation and purport given by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. When pure knowledge is beyond all material affinity, but is not dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, it does not appear very beautiful, although it is knowledge without a material tinge. What then is the use of fruitive activities, which are naturally painful from the beginning and transient by nature, if they are not utilized for the devotional service of the Lord? How can they be very attractive? Purport. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 1.5.12. Even after writing many Vedic literatures, Vyasadev felt very morose. Therefore, his spiritual master, Nardadev, told him that he could be happy by writing about the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Up to that time, Srila Vyasadev had written the Karma Kanta and Jnana Kanta sections of the Vedas. But he had not written about Upashana Kanda or Bhakti. Thus his spiritual master Narada chastised him and advised him to write about the activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore Vyasadev began writing Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Akyana Timrandasya Gyananchala Chalakaya Chakshur On Militam Yene Tasme Sri Kurve Nama Sri Chaitanya Manovistam Stavidam Yene Pudale Swayam Ruba Kadamakyam Tada Di Swepatandikam Nama Om Mishnabadaya Krishna Prastaya Pudale Simari Bhaktivedanta Swamin Iti Namide Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nivishesha Shunyavati Pastatyate Sadhana Tarine. Yes, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Atveda Kadadar Sri Vasadi Gora Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So again the translation when pure knowledge is beyond all material affinity but is not dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna it does not appear very beautiful, although it is knowledge without a material tinge. What then is the use of fruitive activities which are naturally painful from the beginning and transient by nature? If they are not utilized, by, utilized for devotional service of the Lord, how can they be very attractive? So here Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is quoting a verse which was spoken by Narada Muni to Vyasadev. The scene was, the setting was such that Kali Yuga was approaching and out of compassion for the people of Kali Yuga, Vyasadev wanted to 
put all the scripture in a written form. He was dividing the Vedas into four parts, and he was also compiling many Puranas and writing them down. But somehow, he felt little dissatisfaction, even though he had written so much scriptures for the people. It said he felt incomplete and also a little like discouraged or despondent somehow. And at that time, Narada Muni comes and he makes a diagnosis, kind of, and says to Vyasadev, the problem you have is, first of all, you have not sufficiently enough glorified the Lord in all the scriptures. And the second point is that you have given too much emphasis on the Purusharthas, on the Dharma, Artha, Kama and Moksha. And that's the reason why you feel dissatisfied. This was Narada Muni telling to Vyasadev. Because in the Purusharthas, Dharma, Artha and Kama, they belong to the Karma Kanta section. And uh, Vyasadev has extensively written how one can gratify his senses and enjoy the material nature by doing some pious activities. Or he showed how in a good way, kind of in a good way, with punya, with pious activities, one might get good results, elevate to higher planets, etc. But the problem is at one point that result will be extinguished or exhausted, one has to come back to the material world and gets a little frustration or distress again. And I think that is the reason why we are all here, because at one point we felt some dissatisfaction with the material life and somehow we wanted to leave that behind and see how we can get free from this. And this is also explained in the Purushartas by the, by the fourth section, which is Mukti or liberation from this material entanglement. And this by Jnana, actually. And this also Vyasadev has written extensively on, on Jnana Kanda, so analyzing the material existence and seeing how we are not fit to live in this material world. And then he writes how we can get or transcend this material uh, energy. This is also the usual or today's spirituality which we call, we try to practice yoga and etc. that our minds and senses are not affected by the material existence and by the material entanglement. Some people even abandon all their duties, go to the forest or jungles or to the mountains and say in this way they try to be aloof from this material existence. And if they even succeed with this, after death they might even attain the impersonal Brahma Jodi of the Lord. And that Brahma Jodi is actually without any material tinge. What um, Narada Muni is explaining here, without a material tinge beyond all material affinity, that Brahma Jodi is like this because there is no material energy in that. But also in Mabama Jodi, there is no activities. And that is not the ultimate truth. And Narada Muni tells to Vyasadev, look Vyasadev, you have written extensively on the impersonal feature of the Absolute. But that is not the ultimate truth. And therefore, you are dissatisfied. Because when we, come, when we read the Vaishnava literature, what we see is that there is, when we come to spirituality, there is two aspects. The first one is the negative principle. We want to get detachment from material energy, kind of we negate material existence by gyan. But there is also a positive principle, which is getting attached to Krishna and employ our senses to Krishna, which is kind of the positive principle, which can be achieved by bhakti. And this is the reason why Narada Muni tells Vyasadev you have to write the Srimad Bhagavatam. Because first of all, karma and jnana, they both are incomplete without bhakti. Actually, they are even useless without bhakti because all the results which we get from them is temporary. We see from karma kanta, we can get 
elevation to higher planets or even to Brahma Loka, but at the time we have to come back and the results will be exhausted and that can be very frustrating. And even if someone has a lot of gyan or a lot of speculative knowledge, like Viswamitra, who could meditate for 60,000 years and do austerities, even he at one time had a fall down because he was attracted to the beauty of Menaka. So therefore, karma and jnana are both incomplete without bhakti. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, Vyasadev then explains how one can infuse karma and jnana and make it connected to Krishna, make it karma yoga or kar jnana yoga and make it connected to Krishna and make it perfect. One example is in the fifth canto of the story of King Priyavrata. He was the son of Swayambhu Manu, but he was kind of a renunciate, so he understood that material existence is only an entanglement, so he didn't want to rule the kingdom, so he left the kingdom to his brother, King Uttanupado. And he ruled the kingdom, or even the entire world, and also his generations, etc. But at one point, the dynasty got interrupted, and there were no appropriate kings anymore to rule the world. So Brahm, Lord Brahma and, and Manu, they brought approach Priyavrata and say, look Priyavrata, we don't have an appropriate king anymore. So even though you want to be kind of a renunciate, you have to accept this role because only you can do it. And first of all, Priyavrata was a little bit hesitant, hesitant, but at the end, he accepted the role of ruling the kingdom. So he got, he, he became a king, he kind of or engaged in karma activities, he, he became a householder, but everything he dedicated for Krishna. So he made this karma, he infused it with bhakti and made it karma yoga, connected with Krishna. And in this way, at the end, when he saw that there was a, a qualified successor, he left the kingdom to his successor, and then he could renounce and attain perfection and the Supreme Lord. Similarly also Gyan, we see that the four Kumaras, they had a lot of Gyan, they were the sons of Brahma, but it was at the time when they smell the Tulasi leaf and the flowers offered to Lord Krishna, at that time they actually got perfection. When they got in contact with the devotional aspect and after that, they went, traveled all over the world, and every devotee they met or king, they would instruct them about devotional service. So even they, they saw that Gyan is actually imperfect without bhakti. So that is the first point, that karma and Gyan, they are incomplete without bhakti. And the second point is even that bhakti in itself is independent of Gyan and karma. There is no need for jnana and karma to actually get perfection in devotional life. And the example given is in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam of Ajamil. What jnana did he have? What qualities or what knowledge did he have? Nothing. Even he didn't even engage in karma kanda activities. He engaged in sinful activities. He engaged in animalistic activities. But even though he was in this condition, at the end of his life, when he somehow got the, chant, uh, got the chance to chant the name of the Lord, he got perfection in that sense. Yamadutas could not approach him, and the Vishnu Dutas gave him protection and t took him back to the spiritual world. And we see here that he, even, he didn't even have like karma and jnana, but somehow a little aspect of devotional service was there and he could freed and liberated from this. Another point is that there is also no loss in the service or in the path of devotional service. And Narada Muni also tells to Vyasadev, so therefore you have to write about devotional service because anyone who starts practicing devotional service, there will be no loss or diminution in that way. 
Also Arjuna asks Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita, in the chapter 6, what happens to the yogis if they fall down? Will they, they, will, they have not engaged in material activities, but then they try to be spiritual, and even, but if they fall down there, if they don't reach perfection, what happens then? Are they now lost in material and in spiritual life? And Krishna says, no, there is no such worries required because devotional service, there is no loss. And Srimad Bhagavatam gives examples, several examples like Bharata Maharaj, how he, he was the emperor of the whole world and he could renounce the whole kingdom when the time was him to take the step of renunciation. But somehow at the end, he, at, he developed some little attachment to a deer. And this attachment made him to take a rebirth as a deer in the next life. But what we see from the Srimad Bhagavatam as a life in a deer, he didn't forget the devotional service and the principles of devotional service. And taking birth afterwards as Jada Bharata, he was completely aware what the principles of, what, of devotional service were. And therefore, he was very, very careful that he is not doing any mistake again in this path. And actually, Prabhupada writes in one of the purport, Parada Maharaja taking birth as a deer was actually not a fall down. We might see this as a fall down, but Krishna wants to take away this last tinge of attachment which was somehow in his heart. And to take away this attachment, he, he gave him this lesson. Another example is also of uh, King Chitraketu. He, he was well versed in the devotional aspect but somehow he offended Lord Shiva and Mother Parvati cursed him to become a demon. And he takes afterwards the body of a demon the name, with the name of Ritrasura in the Canto 6. But we see that even he was in a body of a demon, he was completely aware of Krishna and devotional service. And this actually astonished Indra. He was fighting with a demon, but got astonished and wondering how this demon knows so much knowledge, has so much knowledge about Krishna and devotional service. So this is what is explained in the Srimad Bhagavatam, how, how even if one starts to, to devotional service, there is no loss. So we have seen three points that karma and jnana without bhakti are not complete, that bhakti is complete in itself, it is not dependent on other processes, and there is also no loss in the process of bhakti. And the fourth point, if you want to put, is that actually only via bhakti one can attain the highest perfection and understand Krishna completely in all his three aspects as Brahman, as Paramatma and Bhagavan which is Krishna saying in, in the 18th chapter of, of text 55, saying, Bhaktiya mam abhyanati yavan yas chasmi tattvataha. If one wants to know him in truth and in complete aspect, in complete feature, this is only possible via devotional service, via bhakti. So several reasons Narada Muni gives to Vyasadev to compile the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the life of a devotee compared to a Jnana Yogi is not necessarily similar. A Jnana Yogi or a speculative person who's, who has some speculative knowledge will attain the Brahma Jodi and he will there be without any material tinge and without any material um, entanglement in that sense, what Narada Muni is describing here. In this way, that person, liberated in Brahma Jodi, will attain peace. But the life of a devotee, looked externally, might not seem like that he is peaceful, that he is without material affection in that sense. 
because the devotees always, for the pleasure of Krishna and the Vaishnavas, always engage in activities, they take up responsibilities, and they sometimes even have worries how to complete or how to finish this task or this mission of devotion. We see in Ramayana, Ravana has kidnapped Mother Sita and Ramachandra and Lakshman were searching for her all over India. And they came across the king of Sugriva who promised to give his army of monkeys to search for Mother Sita. And they split the army into four groups. Each group goes to one direction, north, east, west, and south. And the most important monkeys go to the south with Jambavan, Ang Angada, Nalan, Neel, and also Hanuman, because they know somewhere in the south is the kingdom of Ravan. But they search and search and search, but they don't find where is the, where is the abode of Ravana. They search so much that they come to the end of, in, of Bharat. At the shores, there is only ocean. There is nothing left anymore. And you might imagine what distress or what worries were in the monkey's mind. Because they have promised to Lord Ram, we will come back. We will find the place of Sita. And they, were, they cannot return now empty-handed back and so they were so determined and said, look, we will search for Sita in all the worlds. And if we don't find her, we will die here. But we will not go empty handed back to Lord Ram. So if we look externally, there is no peace or a kind of peace which those people attain when they attain the impersonal Brahma Jyoti. I even Hanuman had to jump over the ocean to a place he never visited before. He was unaware if he could do this. We see a m more relevant or related example is Srila Prabhupada. He also crossed over the ocean for what we can ask, because he could have stayed in India, in Vrindavan. But he wanted to take this mission of Krishna, and he took these responsibilities and made have also some worries in, inside him if he's capable of fulfilling this task. But he took it for us and to please Krishna and his spiritual master. There is an even other incident in Ramayana where in, during the battle, the son of Ravana, he's called Mahi Ravana, he kidnapped Ram and, and Lakshman to offer them as a prey for Kali. And he kidnapped them in the night when Ram and Lakshman were were taking rest, and no of, none of the other monkeys were aware of this. And the next day came, the time for sunrise came, time to start the battle again, but Ram and Lakshman were missing. Can you imagine when this is a day of Radhayatra, and the temple president is missing in the morning? What, what excitement, or what... Um, <laughs> Not excitement, but um, what feelings will go through the devotees? Huh? They have to somehow fulfill this Radhayatra, they have to f make this festival happen, and they have to search for the temple president. And this, was, this big responsibility was now given to Hanuman. You have to find them, Ram and Sita. Can you imagine this task? Actually, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he protects all his devotees, but now, his devotee needs to go and search and protect the Supreme Lord. But he took this responsibility and he went to the underworld and searched for them and freed them from Mahiravana. So we see that the, li devote, the life of a devotee is not necessarily always peaceful or externally looked at. Srila Prabhupada, in his early days when he was a Grihastha, and when we also had association with his spiritual master, he tried to s establish a business in the pharmaceutical field several times. He tried it in Allahabad, in Bombay, and later also in Calcutta to build a business. But somehow this business, any, every time he tried to open one, somehow it failed. And he was contemplating and discussing with his god brothers, and they came across this 
verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, 88th chapter, where Krishna says, if I especially favor someone, I gradually deprive him of his wealth. Then the relatives and friends of such poverty-stricken man abandon him. In this way, he suffers one distress after another. Ignat Baladeva Subhadra Maharani Ki, Goranitai Ki, Jai. And this is maybe a scary statement that Krishna will take away all our possessions and he will give us sometimes suffering and distress. But he is only doing this so that we can 100% and completely depend on him alone. Of course, we don't have to imitate these pure devotees um, like Prabhupada. Krishna will reciprocate to the degree we have surrendered unto him. And if a devotee is not ready enough, he will give us these tasks and uh, challenges in the appropriate portion and amount. But we see here how the life of a devotee is completely different from that of a yogi or of a, or a jnana yogi. So therefore, Vyasadeva writes the Srimad Bhagavatam, and he utilizes his talent for writing for Krishna. And, and he connects everything, what he writes, with Krishna. He writes, explains about the creation. Usually when we hear of the creation, we think, this is maybe a boring subject matter. I don't understand anything. But Vyasadeva writes in this way that he shows that in all the parts of the creation, behind them, there is the hand of Krishna. Krishna is doing this creation. He connects this with creation. Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam is so complete. He even explains the Sankhya philosophy while uh, citing Kapila Muni. Sankhya philosophy is, is usually the philosophy of these Yan yogis who at the end attain the Brahma, the Brahma Jyoti. But he writes, he explains that Sankhya if one understands Sankhya philosophy correctly, one will understand that behind everything is the Purusha, Ishvara, Krishna. And in, he makes in this way the connection to Krishna and, sh and in this way makes this subject matter also complete. He gives many descriptions of dynasties. We read in the ninth canto so many names like the Surya dynasty and Chandra dynasty, and we might think, who are these people? Why do I have to read of them, read about them? But he makes at the end the connection. He says, in this dynasty, Lord Ramachandra appears. In this dynasty, Lord Krishna appears. Therefore, these dynasties are connected with Krishna. Therefore, they are complete. So in this way, he, at the end, of course, then comes also to the different incarnations and activities of Krishna himself. He describes them. And in this way, he shows how Srimad Bhakodam is the complete Purana, is the essence of all the Vedas. And we also can become complete if we, would, if we engage our talents, our inclinations, or our nature for the service of Krishna. Be it be cooking, uh, arts, music, speaking, or anything else, you will realize when you apply them for Krishna, you will see how this talent becomes complete. So this is this verse from Srimad Bhagavatam spoken by Narada Muni is recited by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatan Goswami. And see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the embodiment of Srimad Bhagavatam. He lives, uh, he shows how to live according to Srimad Bhagavatam. And he comes extinct or ex exclusively to distribute that devotional aspect or Bhakti by the Sankirtan movement and if every one of us would join the Sankirtan movement whenever there is the chanting of the glories of the Lord and the holy name of the Lord if we would join the Sankirtan movement we will see how our life gets complete and perfected and also if we would do this as a congregation how we would then also grow strong as a congregation and community. So this is uh, what I have for today. Thank you for listening. And uh, if you want to add something, please. Hare Krishna.
you uh, what is the good uh, can I ask you please uh, what is a good way uh, to work with e with ego because I consider myself uh, as a man with a big ego uh, and I observe many times that uh, uh, I think too much of myself and I uh, bring too much power of this uh, thinking let's say mm, Many times I uh, spent, I have spent already with devotees, right? And uh, I did many things in different cities. Uh, we went on uh, uh, celebrations, we went uh, uh, to schools, we went to different activities. And I feel uh, good myself only when I do something. So it means I think a lot of myself. It means I bring too much, uh, uh, too much importance of myself. What to do with ego? How to work with it? Uh, how to, how to ruin it? I think one, I would say, is use that ego to take up responsibilities in Krishna conscious task, and I think this will then make you humbler. Does that make sense? Because we have a big ego. And if we would engage our activities in Krishna, we, the usual process is that we become afterwards humbler. And if one has a big ego, maybe he can use that for taking up maybe even big responsibilities. Maybe if other people, which they cannot do. And maybe in that way, that ego can help to serve in that way. What would you say, Sabya Sashipu? Um, it can be used, you know, so we can sometimes do things. Typical example, okay. Say I'm a Brahmachari and I have a big ego. So I wouldn't want to stop my service as a brahmachari, also protecting my ego. So you take up some responsibility. Because you have a big ego, you, you may come at it with your ego. And for the sake of maintaining the reputation of your ego, you try to do your service very nicely. But what's good is that the more you're connected to Krishna consciousness, as you stated, uh, our senses are controlled and they are purified. So we make some advancement. So taking up responsibility uh, can inflate the ego, because now I'm doing this. But then now I'm doing it for Krishna. And so you also want to maintain that ego by maintaining the service and not messing it up. But the more you do it, the more it purifies you. So um, yeah, we can't help where we are, but uh, where we'll be later on, we want to make sure it's within devotional service. And within devotional service means we'll, we'll grow, we'll become purified. So your answer is very nice, Prabhu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Prabhu, you Hare Krishna. Um, to that question, I would say like, when we accept a spiritual master, um, then we can really let go that ego. I think this is the, the most humble way to let it go because the guru um, takes away that ego. He will create situations that that ego can go away. Mm. And he cuts the ego. So I would say like to pray for spiritual masters is a good way. Mm. To Mataji's point also, what the spiritual master does for the ego is that um, to serve a living person 
you know, we are practicing how to serve Krishna, who's also a person. But with Krishna, we can kind of do it because, well, he's God and he's somewhere far. But to serve a living person who will chastise you, criticize you, you know, give you tasks, so that really crushes our ego. And uh, so he does that service for us. And once the false ego is gone, then we're ready to, to serve without false egotism, the Lord. So that was a good point, Mataji. He will turn that false ego in the correct ego, where you then realize that one is a servant of Krishna and his spiritual master. Rachi Chatina Chatamrada Ki Jai Shri Prabhupad Ki Jai Jai Ho Krishna, 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 Hare, Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare, Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 
Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 